Ladies. Welcome to my channel. Um, for those of you who might just be stopping by or this is your first time here, this is a channel about quilting, hand stitching, wool stitching, embroidery, all of that. Um, and a little bit of life and a little bit of the weather, which has been across the board today. We had beautiful sunshine this morning. G and I went out for a wonderful walk in the neighborhood, and you could tell that it was storming over Mount Hood. Um, and I understand that there's snow in the Cascades. So that means that we are having typical spring weather in Oregon. Yeah, this date when it comes to spring, you just never know. Um, we had a nice, nice walk this morning, and now it is looking like there's some thunderheads coming. So a good time to stay inside. I really wanted to get a, a video in the can, <laughs> as they say, a film in the can. Well, that dates me, huh? Um, because starting... Uh, I mean, it's going to be spring break here, and so I am busy, busy, busy with um, uh, grandkids. I do believe I will be busy with grandkids. I know that my older grandson and I are going to go see a movie um, on Monday, uh, Arthur the King. I cannot wait. Give me a good dog movie. Give me a good dog movie. So um, we're going to go do that. Uh, for the day and and just hang out, you know, just hang out. They're growing up so fast. I mean, they're really growing up like time. I so appreciate all of the comments in the last video, the um, sharing of your memories of your dad and your histories. That is... Number one, what I embrace in this channel is the sharing back and forth. It makes the world seem smaller and more connected, and I so appreciate that. So thank you for leaving me a comment um, about your own uh, paternal histories. Uh, it has been quite a week. I have, I almost tried to find me a quilt therapist. I don't know if they exist or not. I don't know. But I, okay, let me just tell you what happened. So I, in the beehive, the beehive is a nice size room, don't get me wrong, but there are two doors that, uh, open. They're like um, half-size doors, and they allow entry into empty space where the roof line goes over the wall of the house, and it's it doesn't serve any purpose. You know, it's just um, empty space. And um, on the one side, I, because the previous owner had thrown down some uh, plywood over the joists. Um, I have used that as a bit of storage. And um, I wasn't sure if there was a, a bit of a leak or something going on in there. So I um, had a guy come that was going to check it out. And I had to pull the things that I stored in there. And it freaked me out. It freaked me out because um, I'm fairly organized. And I can attest that I am not a hoarder in the true sense of hoarding, but there is a component to quilting and cross-stitching which does allow for... Um, curating, as um, my friend Robin calls it, a curating uh, product that brings satisfaction to the soul. Now, didn't that sound important? 
didn't that sound reasonable? So, on the surface, it looks organized and well-maintained, and it looks more like decor than hoarding. But in that storage space, I pulled out tote totes, you know, those plastic totes. And, I mean, there was a whole tote. I'm looking at the totes over there. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to show you. But there was a whole tote of flannels. There is a tote, two totes of um, pieces of batting. You know, like when you... Um, get a king size bat but the quilt was only a queen size bat so you cut it uh, you 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 can't throw it away I mean yeah I mean and back in the day I used to actually piece leftover batting together either with that there's a product out there that's like um, it's fabric tape and you iron it on and you can piece two pieces of batting together and then you make a bigger piece. I either do that or I would then um, zigzag stitch pieces together. And then I started saving batting pieces because you would, um, my friends and I would make these flannel quilts that are quilt quilted as squares already, then you sew them together and then you snip them. Do you remember that? Yeah. So I have two totes full of batting pieces and they're all sitting everything is sitting out here because I had to clear out that storage space plus my sewing machine case and my little Janome sewing machine that I take to retreat so the place looks like a disaster and it's making me nervous then the next thing I did was I have a a metal, um, you know how a laundry basket is, but this one's out of metal. You know, it's kind of cool looking. I don't know, got it at some craft store. It's about three feet tall and round and has handles. You get it. That is um, where I was rolling up quilted tabletops and that kind of thing, you know, to storm because then it looks pretty. Everything has to look pretty. But when I pulled that away from the door and looked at it, I realized that I had just been throwing on top of that a bunch of quilt tops, either bed size quilt tops or um, table toppers that haven't been quilted yet. It's just the top. I can officially say I think I'm somewhat of a topper and I wonder if that um, channel that has that show Hoarders can also make a show called Toppers where uh, quilters can come on and just show their tops in maybe be shamed into quilting. <laughs> I don't know. And they're all beautiful. I mean, I think they're beautiful. But why I haven't done that next step is because I got excited. So what is occurring in this greater space is it's showing me... It's showing me that... I'm easily distracted by something pretty. And I need to think about finishing up some of those tops and maybe gifting them. Maybe this is your my year to really get that mode of gifting going. Um, I usually do that. You know, we all do. Quilters, we're all about giving. Um, so this also brings me to the next subject. If it seems a little bit, you know, a little bit off-kilter today, it's because this whole room has made me off-kilter. But um, let me just say that at the end of this video, 
will be a poster board with the winner of the $35 gift card and the um, a copy of the Cream and Sugar Block of the Month. And what I'll need you to do is, in the drop-down box, first of all, be a subscriber. Hit that thumbs up. I'm emotionally fragile. I just need people to hit that thumbs up to make myself feel better. Yeah. So, um, let me just think. <laughs> so the poster is going to be with the two names of the winners. So in the drop-down box, I will have the email address that you will email me if you're the winner with your email address so that I can forward that on to the fat quarter shop. Yeah. Because they'll directly send that to you. Directly send that to you. I, on the other hand, we had talked about doing the 12 month program and I had a total brain fart because I got all excited about that block of the month cream and sugar. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I knew that I was not going to be doing it in this colorway as much as I love it. I mean, it screams me. I love this kind of tone-on-tone -tone stuff. But I really wanted to break outside of my box and challenge myself. So I put down that I wanted to do it out of uh, a line of fabric called Beach House. <laughs> this is where I get too excited about something and I jump ahead not really being sure um, of the outcome. So what happened was I was going, well how long is it going to be before I get this fabric so I can start this? I did not realize when I put a reservation in for Beach House that it doesn't get released till July. Well, I don't want to wait till July. I'm an impulsive, satisfy the chocolate urge this moment. And so I sat back and I decided, what am I going to do now? I can't wait till July. I want to start this block of the month now. And then I thought, I love... Civil War fabrics or early Americana fabrics. I used to meet up with two friends and when I lived in Bend and we once a month would just meet up and share Civil War or early Americana fabrics. And those are fabric prints that was that were during that era. Um, and I like the color, the old fashioned color of them. And so, um, let me just show you this quilt here. I still have to bind it. The binding is on it. I just have to tack the binding down. So these are all that early Americana period of the 1800s fabrics. And this is a giant quilt. It's like king size. And um, all the fabrics came from the Stitch and Post in Sisters. Uh, Jackie, who um, works for the Stitch and Post, had put them all together, and it was so much fun to do this quilt. But I have a lot of um, fabrics from that time period. I'm just going to reach. Oh my god! Yes, I found this whole basket of. Yeah fabrics and so I've decided that since I don't want to wait till July I'm going to start this quilt if you want to start with me you pick your fabrics out whatever you want to do it in and one of the commenters one of our friends on this channel said she already bought this whole kit and she has all these fabrics I was so jealous um, so I'm going to start that this next week. Yeah, even though it's spring break, if I get a moment to myself, I'm going to make the first block. And I'm just following the um I'm just following the book. 
And so, like, here's the first block. I'm just going to pick randomly pick fabrics out of this bin here and um, make that first block. So that this block of the month for me will be starting in April. And I'm just going to do one block a month. You all can do as many blocks of the months as you want. But I'm not... I, these days, maybe it's my age. Maybe it's wanting a calmer world. I just don't want to stress myself out. So I am doing one block a month. So the first... Um, block is called the five patch star block and oh it is really pretty let's see there it is right there so I just need three different fabrics and uh, because I knew that I had I have all kinds of, you know really this is like, I'm going to just go set this off of this stool. There's so many fabrics in here, but I wasn't sure, I wasn't sure if I had enough neutrals. So this last week was Wooly Wednesday at Pioneer Quilts, and so I picked out three neutrals uh, for backgrounds to start me off with. And... Um, and I didn't necessarily stay within that Americana genre. I just picked three neutrals. So I'm kind of excited about that. So I, I bought three half yards um, and plan on doing that. So if you're joining along on this block of the month, know that there's no pressure. One block a month. Yeah. One block a month. Oh my gosh, look at how gorgeous is that. Oh, yeah. While I was at um, Wooly Wednesday, which was fantastic, I mean, we had a nice group just talking and sharing, and I learned so much from these group interactions because, um, especially this particular group, because a handful of them have been stitching together for a really long time. I mean, before the shop was in its location, this is the third, I believe this is the third location for Pioneer Quilts, and the third owner, I think. And so um, this group has been stitching, and there's an 1800s uh, group, you know, with the fabrics from the 1800s, which reminds me that if you're at all interested in um, that time period of fabrics, um, my friend Sue Stanley, who does a stitch in time, she has a floss tube, it's called a floss tube, on um, YouTube, stitch in time. She also does quilts, hand quilting, hand piecing, uh, does a lot of history and background on particular period. She picks a period and then does the historical background on it, and it's quite informative. So if you, um, when you leave here, just go check that out and subscribe over there so you can, um, check in on her information because she has a lot of good information. And with that said, please just hit the subscribe button again. Um, it has, it's kind of funny because it's not just the crafting community, but G and I, we watch RV videos, the RV Nomad Travelers, and they are all complaining about, um, the subscribers being bumped off. So, um, let me tell you, at least half of you that are commenting are not subscribed. Uh, and I'm just telling you this because there's a way for me to automatically know. When someone's subscribed, there is an automatic um, response option for the 
um, host of the YouTube. When there, that doesn't exist, it means that that person is not subscribed. They're commenting, which I love, but they're not subscribed. And whether they're being kicked off um, by some algorithm or not, just hit the subscribe button and help us out. That goes for all YouTube channels. So while I was at um, while I was at uh, Wooly Wednesday, which is really awesome, I was working on this particular project, which is heart to hand, heart to hand, and. I kind of stitched down that tomato and was starting the scissors. And just so you see how I do this. So when I'm using a cotton backing background, so I am adhering wool to cotton. The cotton is much flimsier than the wool. They're substantially different in weight and texture. So to make sure that I don't stretch out the wool, I mean stretch out the cotton, I back all of my pieces with a Pellon fusible interfacing. So this is what the back looks like. And then I use um, fusible on my wool pieces. And you know, I used soft fuse, and I still have some of that left, but that product is no longer being um, made currently. And so, um, right now there's Flexi Fuse, which I have used, and it's very nice. So all of these pieces have been fused on here until I stitch them. And you can't tell. And I don't have any problem needling through these layers because I use a sharp needle. And, um, yeah, I don't have any problems. That way I can travel with my projects without losing any pieces and not worrying about it. So here's the road that I'm currently working on. And these have been... You know, this is a UFO, so this uh, this has been um, carried around by me for a while and still have not lost the pieces. So that's what I worked on at um, Wooly Wednesday at Pioneer Quilts. And then um, I keep, I travel with these in a, you know, you get these boxes at, I got these like at Joann's. The news about Joann's is so, I mean, it's kind of frightening for me. And yes, I am predominantly a quilt shop shopper, but there are definitely things that I get at Joann's, and I do um, uh, support that business. And it's so sad to think that that might go away. I'm hoping with this Chapter 11 or whatever reorganization that it turns it, it ends up being okay um, because I mean yes they have resorted to more than just fabric and uh, there's a lot of crafting and there's even toys and things like that in there but um, I still I still would not want them to close so I'm hoping that they don't yeah Okay, moving on. So we have, I've been, uh, I mean, part of the reason I haven't gotten a whole lot done is uh, I've been listening to this book on audiobook. And yes, I can stitch when I'm listening to it, but it's so mesmerizing that sometimes I'm finding myself just sitting there. Do you ever do that? It's like you're stitching, but then you're you're sitting there and your your mind is going and you're you're you know thinking about what's being read but this book um 
The River We Remember, which is by um, William Kent Kruger. So rich. Such a rich, rich book that I would recommend it. Um, just from the pure entertainment satisfaction of it, um, it's really good. It's a really good book. I have to, I only have a few days left. I have not done my March stitching, and I have to do that um, with the Kathy Schmidt's um, Stitch of the Month, and it's the Bumblebee, so I have to do that. I did get in the mail from Crabapple Hill. I I couldn't pass this up. I It's a new pattern uh, by Meg Hockey. And, um, you know, in, and I think this is also for the hand stitching world, but in the cross stitch world, uh, we get enabled by each other. And one of the things is a stitchy box. And by a stitchy box, I mean that we repurpose jewelry boxes into our stitching uh, carry thing. So here's here's um, a stitchy box. It's a jewelry box and I put a little cross stitch on top but when you open it you've decorated it with all the things that you need you know needles, um, threaders, scissors, uh, you have you have all the different things that you would use uh, that you might need for a day of stitching with friends. Um, corner gauge, some waxers, um, and um, you just take these uh, when you go stitching and then everything's there. You feel very organized. It's very personally um, so uh, very satisfying. You feel like you are in control of your world. And um, so I also like to have that with my quilting. So making a little quilting box with things that you would require. You know, your scissors, um, clips. I mean, it's just a small way to make yourself feel like you're an organizational genius. And um, so when I saw this pattern, I thought, there are so many people in my life that are cat people. I, on the other hand, I feel like God made me allergic to cats because he knew I would have 20. I would be that proverbial cat lady with cats all over the place. Um, so, in fact, I am actually anaphylactic with cats. So I can't live with cats. When I go to people's houses that have cats, I pre-medicate before I go. Yeah, have to use my inhaler, or take allergy medicines and stuff. But I love them. They are quite funny. And I love dog and cat um, reels on Instagram. They are so funny. So when I saw this new pattern by Crabapple Hill Studio, I thought, I need to get this because it would be a wonderful little gift for um, the cat people in my life. And although this pattern is made to create a pin like a brooch or a pin, I thought it could be a pin cushion. So, look at this. They're all embroidered, and it's called kitty pins. And they measure about um, two and five-eighths by three inches, so they're not big. So they would fit inside... Um, one of these stitchy boxes, but I thought it was so cute. And I I like to do um, embroidery stitches just to practice. This actually has silk ribbon on it too, it looks like. Oh no, it's actually 
the rose stitch, um, embroidery rose stitch. Yeah, so pretty cool. Pretty cool. I was really happy when that came because I think it will be perfect. I hope that you are, uh, many of you have written me that you're able to come to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. I'm excited about that. I hope I see many of you there. I feel like I'm a little behind the weight eight ball because I have to make my postcard and get organized for the class that I'm taking. I'm taking Scott Anson's trees class. And so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and it's already, it's just so unfathomable to me that it is going to be April in the blink of an eye. Yeah. It's like, how did, how did that happen? Although I'm very, very excited. Um, about the spring weather. Everything is blooming around here. That's what happens here. It just like you go to bed and you wake up the next morning and all the cherry blossoms are out. All of the pear trees are blooming. It's just um, it happens just like that. So I think that's it. I just wanted to get this in there before spring break came because there would be no time then. And um, because I'm not sure if I'll have a moment or not. And I knew that you were waiting for those uh, giveaways. So be sure you check here at the end of this video to see if your name is picked. And please like and subscribe. And we shall see you the next time around. And hopefully some of you are going to jump on board for this block of the month. And you can choose whatever color theme you want. Yeah. Hope you all are doing well, and you know, I love you guys.